disciplined people performing disciplined thought and executing disciplined action. Welcome to the Winners Find a Way Show. I am your host, Trent Clark, and this is episode 21 with Brad Stevens, the entrepreneur whisperer. Brad is from Atlanta, Georgia, a good friend and entrepreneur organization member, and he has been an asset to so many business owners and executives along the way. You will want to listen for all his nuggets. Brad has created many different systems and entrepreneur experiences that have helped him build business growth and success. You will not want to miss us discussing finding a system, strategy and growth, and the power of self-discipline. Episode one of two, Brad Stevens. Episode 21, The Entrepreneur Whisperer. Hi, this is Brent Clark. I'm excited to welcome my guest, Brad Stevens. How are you doing, Brad? Fantastic, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man, I'm so excited to have you on board. Like this is just, uh, you and I have been friends a little while and uh, always love your insights, man. I mean, you are just, you're one of these guys who like is the entrepreneur. I think you're like, you know, the horse whisperer. You're like the <laughs> entrepreneur whisperer. All right. So it's, uh, I know many folks uh, lean on your advice. You've got a great uh, service-based business, global service-based business that uh, I love and use, by the way, in outsource access. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, but but thanks for coming on the show, man. Super excited. Oh, thanks for having me, man. Thanks for the uh, the kind comments. I don't know if I quite live up to entrepreneur whisperer, but uh, definitely <laughs> have, have uh, plenty of scars and and uh, blood and sweat along the way to to kind of get some experience that I'm uh, happy to share. That's awesome. So today, for for our listeners, if you've ever faced stiff adversity, felt like the losses are mounting, and you need to find a better way, well came to the right place, whether you are already an entrepreneur, athlete, business leader, or just looking to start your journey to being elite, this is the perfect podcast and show for you. So always bringing on these one percenters who come along and Brad is no different. There's going to be a little time for Q&A at the end. So uh, if you want to put those uh, questions in the chat, I'll look for them and we will get to them. Hopefully a few highlights on Brad Stevens. Before I do that, Brad, tell more people can find you. Sure. I mean, uh, all the standard standard places. Um, I mean, from a company standpoint and, and what we do with our, our company, outsourceaccess.com is uh, our website where we provide vetted VAs and for entrepreneurs and business owners globally. Um, BradStevensTraining.com uh, is kind of my speaker site where it's got a lot of content about organizations or spoken content that I that I cover. And uh, Facebook and LinkedIn, you just look up my name, you'll find, love to connect. And um, we push in a lot of content and information that may be helpful. So those are the standard spots. Uh, awesome. So that's a little bit of background on you. Lifetime entrepreneur, domestic, international businesses, distribution now across 18 countries. It's amazing. Outsource Access is an offshore virtual service firm grown to 340 employees in under two years with a target of 600 staff by the end of 21. So you are cooking and I'm sure this pandemic remote environment may have served you really well as uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the co-founder of a startup software platform one-on-one uh, do you still have that one, Brad? Yeah, it's actually something we launched um, uh, during this kind of whole pandemic situation to be able to rapidly connect members of an organization to create connectivity. Nice. Love it. And then also keynote speaker, uh, over 100 events globally, your international speaker, BST International in the USA, Canada, South America, Latin America, Canada, Africa, Middle East, Australia, Asia, speaks on agility and scaling for CEO peer groups with opportunities to share stages alongside thought leaders such as John Maxwell and Deepak Chopra. Nice. And then, of course, uh, also you have your own podcast, Automate and Delegate, what you should not be doing. I love that. What you should not be doing. Right. Um, you've got some great uh, t- guests that share specific tools, resources, strategies, fast track growth. Uh, nine-year member of the Global Entrepreneur Organization, as well as myself. Both of us are EO members. Um, you are the EO Regional Director, East Regional Director for Member Engagement. 22 chapters, over 1,000 members that you're ga- garnering that. Uh, you know, are you trying to, ha- you, are you having a hard time staying busy, Brad? Like, uh, how many kids now? <laughs> well, how many kids you got? Uh, two little ones, five-year-old and two-year-old. So. Oh, yeah, five and two. Yeah, little ones chasing them around. Like, uh, man, you know, I just I just see you as a, a bit of a couch potato, Brad. I'll be honest, you know, <laughs> like, with, uh, with just nothing going on here. So, <laughs> So incredible. But I, I also really uh, was tied to some of the philanthropy stuff that you've done. 
um, you know, advising business and civic leaders, uh, some direct strategic work with Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King Jr., or actually the third, um, for his philanthropic efforts, launching some VA Give Back, a documentary film that was pretty cool about the firm selected to run a think tank on economic growth and uh, at the United Nations headquarters. So, yeah, pretty I cool mean, experience. man, come on, you know, like, uh, and a, and a five year charitable event to support breast cancer awareness. So. You know, uh, there's no moss growing on this Rolling Stone. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now, Brad. So tell me, tell tell everybody, like, why why do you come on and do a show like this? Like, uh, you come on with me. We always talk shop. We're talking about winners find a way and how to figure out a way to win. Why do you come and, and deliver to the audience? Well, I mean, I'm I'm 41 years old now, and so I've had enough chance to to beat my head against the wall as an entrepreneur to get enough uh, experience through the years, and you know, I've had a ton of people that have given me shortcuts or insights. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm one of those people that look, if somebody's got a, a faster, quicker way and they've figured things out, I, I just soon take that path and try and go bang my head against the wall. And so, mm. you know, if I can, if I can extend, uh, some, a little less head banging, uh, for some people on some, some paths of growth and finding their direction, um, on multiple topics that we can kind of touch on, you know, happy to do so. I had a lot of people in my path throughout the years that kind of gave me those shortcuts and, uh, yeah. and happy maybe can provide some of those along the way. I love it. Let's, let's talk. Let's just, let's just jump right into that. Your, your <laughs> number one shortcut right now that is, that is creating huge value in your life. Tell me that one right now. Learning how to get out of the business and get an amazing management team that can run and build and scale it. Um, you know, that's probably the biggest things, you know, with our recent company and we've grown fast, you know, as you shared, we're about 350 employees now and uh, just over, over two years now. And, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs just, and, and, and people in other professions as well, just struggle. They just get kind of caught in, in the detail and, and they just never get out and work on the strategic growth and plan to scale. They're just constantly living in the business. And that's why, I mean, less than 4% of businesses in the U.S. ever get over a million dollars, you know, per year um, because they're constantly living in that. And I've been guilty of that myself. And so we implemented a system called uh, Entrepreneurial Operating System, EOS, that a lot of listeners may be familiar with. And it's a framework that is designed to get that business owner, that entrepreneur in that visionary role where they deliver the highest and best use of their time and truly where they're the happiest and get what's called an integrator, an integrator, which is basically that side by person that works with the entrepreneur that can help execute and bring all the ideas to life and kind of drive the day to day detail operations and implementing EOS in our business, which we did um, uh, end of last or middle of last year and truly getting that framework in place. Uh, has just set me free from a to literally let me focus on strategy and growth and building the company and getting out of the detail and has been a key part of our, our growth and scale. So whatever system you use, there's that there's traction, you know, there's scaling up. There's a bunch of different frameworks yes. that are out there. Yeah. Whatever you do, choose one of some kind to get yourself out and get the right infrastructure and management team in place. Um, it's It's been amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. So I love Gino Wickman, good uh, a friend of mine and uh, a fellow EO member for a lot of years. Yeah. I think he still is. And uh, Gino wrote EOS. Uh, he wrote the book Traction, yeah. uh, which is the EOS system. So good, good shout out for Gino there. And and that's a great tool, right? And and I agree with you one hundred percent. Like find a system for sure. Um, you know, I was going to say one of the tools that I have been using is Blinkist. I am absolute mm -hmm. fan. You, you all talk about, hey, CEOs read 50 books a year. I have five children in three companies, so I'm trying to keep up with Brad, just trying to stay busy. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that's that's been a game changer for me. Like, how do I get in? And people like yourself and and people that are really well read and have been through things always come up to me and go, hey, Trent, have you read? And I'm like, oh, man, like if I stacked another book on my shelf, if I look like 10 years ago, in my office, I had like a stack of like 22 books at one point that had been recommended or given that I went out and bought on good recommendations. I'm just trying to get to them, right? And I could never get to them. So I'm like, oh man. And and Blinkist has been my savior. You know, it's uh it's been a great way. It's basically book reviews in 15 minutes, either written or audio, which is huge for people like me that are moving around the world and and delivering content everywhere. So that's that was huge. And then also uh, a secondary shout out to Evernote that uh, the actually they they uh, synchronize together. So if mm -hmm. you're taking any notes in Blinkist, all saved down into your Evernote, which has been huge for me to reference high quality work and, and and adapt it and put it into our work. So that's been huge. Yeah, no, I agree. All right. I, when some of the executive book summaries is a similar one that uh, 
you know, that I've used. But I'll, you know, I'll share it on that point that you're talking about, Trent, because that's another thing too, is I kept finding myself as well. And I still consume content. But one of the things when we did EOS implementation is our EOS implementer had us reread a good old classic, good to great, the old Jim Collins, yeah. good to great. Yeah. And we read that together as a management team. And I read it in my late 20s through the lens of a young entrepreneur. It's like, oh, these are some great ideas and so forth. But I'd say I reread that. And as, as leading this group and then, you know, being president of the entrepreneur organization for Atlanta, I had a lot of stuff, plus being in the middle of COVID. And it was like rediscovering it for the first time. And I'm like, these are the most timeless principles that will last forever. Yeah. If you can fundamentally use these, the whole concept of disciplined people, thought and action, the hedgehog concept, the flywheel concept, mm, so the right people, right seats, the level five leadership, like all those frameworks. It's like, I don't need to look any further, right? If I can just really squeeze all the juice out of this. So I've, you know, I love consuming content and I'm the next to consume the next book, but I've tried to kind of put, plug my ears a little bit and be like, you know what, let me squeeze all the juice out of some of the frameworks that I know mm. exist already. But I just move on to the, and, and entrepreneurs, a lot of times we can be guilty of that is I think we can be information consumers at scale, but we never fully digest and execute what we learn before we move on to the next idea. So I've tried to be a little bit even more disciplined on my content consumption as well um, to really make sure I'm maximizing what I've already consumed a lot of times. Yeah. I, and, you know, I think that's a great reference book because there's a Collins book that I reference a lot with my clients and it's built to last. And and it's mm -hmm. foundational, right? Like, it's not like, hey, maybe we should do some of these things. Like, hey, if you don't do these things, sustainability, one of those key itties, right, becomes a problem. Like, you, you I don't know if you're going to make it if you're not built to last here. Like, well, do we do we have to have key people in positions? Because we got a couple duds that aren't working out great, but, you know, they're really nice people. So we're just holding on and the whole department's <laughs> suffering. <laughs> well, you know. Man, all and then all of a sudden you put a pandemic on that sandwich, and all of a sudden you know you you don't have a good sandwich. All of a sudden things are things yeah. are not looking good. So that's that's uh, that's big, man. So all right, so yeah. tell, I want I want to jump into Brad Stevens a little bit. Like uh, let, let's let's get to know you a little bit. Like when you talk about you know growing, did you grow up in Atlanta? I did. Yeah, I'm one of the the few rare native Atlantans. The, okay. Days. All right. So you're home. All right. So was, was there a most impactful pivot for you as a kid? Like you knew like, Hey, this is what I want to do. Or you had an experience and said, I I'm just going to keep outperforming people at my level because you, you mentioned a, a big statistic, only less than 4% of all businesses in the United States make a million dollars or more. Like that's bonkers. Yeah. I mean, you talk about small business, like this whole country's founded on it, right? Shout out to Carol Roth and her book, like small business is where it's at. And so when you think about 1 million, and listen, I'm, I'm no big business just because I'm in, I'm, I'm not the dial corp, right? You right. and I just yet. So what, what about, um, talk about, is, is there something that impacted you that said, Hey, this is the direction I want to go. Winners Find a Way show is brought to you by Data Driven Operations, powered by Journeys. Journeys is a software solution that helps you create a winning formula for your organization. DD Ops, powered by Journey, helps you act as one, see as one, work as one, play as one, win as one. Are you looking for visibility, coachability, and productivity amongst your team? DD Ops is your software. Click on the link in the show notes to learn more. Well, I mean, I was I was fortunate to kind of grow up in a bit of an entrepreneurial kind of environment. You know, my my grandfather had started kind of a, a business in the woodworking kind of space and, um, and woodworking and aluminum space. And then my dad ended up uh, getting involved with that business. So I I kind of grew up seeing entrepreneurship around me. I joke around. There was always like a whiteboard permanently hanging over the fireplace, like in our house. Like there was always some <laughs> kind of ideas flying around. And, and, I love uh, that. So it was, no, no uh, reason for a TV. We have a whiteboard. Right. Exactly. <laughs> just uh, just get high on, on, on markers and ideas. Um, but uh, it's your but own. Was, it's your own. This is us right here. Right. It's, exactly. uh, high on <laughs> on market <laughs> marker ink and our whiteboard ideas. I, I love it. I have to coin that. I just came up with that. That, that could be good for uh, the whiteboard, uh, <laughs> the whiteboard business. Um, but yeah, I mean, being around it, I mean, any of us, right? Any, any person that grows up, I mean, if you grow up and both your parents are doctors, right? I mean, you're going to have a proclivity either completely 180 degrees against it. Or, you know, kind of uh, be grown, you know, drawn to it. And so, uh, so for me, I was kind of around it. And, and funny enough, my dad, so my dad took me to school all the time when I was in, in elementary school. He drove me to school every morning on the way to work and would drop me off. And 
And I just was really curious. And we just had conversations about, about business and entrepreneurship and even at a super young age. And so my actual, my first company was in uh, was a third or fourth grade and had a micro machine rental business. You remember those little mini cars, you know, back in the day with the dude that oh, spoke yeah, thousand yeah, miles yeah, an yeah. hour. He spoke really, really fast and did those commercials and the micro machines. Um, but anyway, I loved those. I asked for them for all the birthdays and Christmases, and I collected a bunch of them. And my parents uh, enjoyed Crown Royal from time to time. So they had those like purple Crown Royal bags. And so I had them full of micro machines. And I went into my little Christian school, third or fourth grade. <laughs> and this was my, I rented micro machines to all, all of my friends. And uh, it's funny, my mom still got the folder. I had, had a VP of marketing. I had a frequent customer punch list. I had a little newsletter that I wrote out on a typewriter. Wow. Um, wow. In elementary school. Yeah, it was like third or fourth grade. So it was, um, Dang. but I think wow. being around it, I mean, that's just a testament. If you're around it and kind of having that dialogue, you know, happening. And um, so anyway, so that was kind of my my first uh, first foray in entrepreneurship. And then I, I started a, a tutoring company in high school. Actually, it was a way to kind of help kids bridge the summer gap. So I just went to all the middle school counselors and I said, who's struggling with math or who wants to get ahead? And they gave me the list and I had about 18 to 20. I mean, it's brilliant, right? That, it's just yeah. brilliant. Like that's just thinking. That's just thinking, in my opinion, just like on top of it and, and recognizing where the need is. Like, hey, I, I don't know where the need is, but I know someone who does know where the need's at. Right. And that is, that is sure. so smart. I feel I, I feel a little bit you know, sorry for your five-year-old because he's got like five years old, you know, he's got like five years to create a business or else, you know, he's going to be running from behind here, you know, <laughs> like, like better, better get it going. Right. Like there's going to be some pressure. It's awesome. And, and yeah. I come from a very similar environment, right? Newspaper delivery was big. I mean, I was, I was running my own route in elementary school and, and my dad was a big part of it. My dad owned his own firm. So we had a lot of great conversations around him helping me on a couple of mornings with papers and things like that. And, Man, I was I was curious, right? That was that was a big thing. So let's let's go to this next part, yeah. Brad. I love the quote from Chris McChesney and Sean Covey from uh, the Four Disciplines of Execution. Also a good book. Uh, winners, when shown data that they are losing, find a way. Let's talk a little bit about your background coming up. I mean, sounds like you've had bunches of wins. Talk to me about one of those setbacks in your background where, you know, you were like up against it, but, but you figured out how to way to overcome, come back and, 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 and bring it back. Sure. No, that's, and I'm a huge fan of 40X. Actually, interestingly, that's I kind of brought a little bit of 40X into EOS. So the way that you do yeah. goals in 40X, where you create your quarterly goals and come with the leading and lag indicators. So I actually yeah. kind of baked that into kind of our EOS framework. Um, For sure. Yeah. It's uh, the four disciplines there. And, uh, and I actually used it to run our board for EO Atlanta this, this past year as well. And it's just simple, lean process. Um, but, but yeah, I completely agree. What, what gets measured is what gets done. Um, and, and it changes the, the behavior for, for me, um, you know, a, a pretty profound setback, but it's also, you know, there's silver linings to setbacks as most of us tend to see if you're looking for the opportunity in it. Um, so my business before this one, uh, we actually manufactured and distributed uh, uh, teeth whitening products all over the world. We had a manufacturing partner and we had a beauty division. We had a, a dental division, um, you know, about 10,000 accounts and we had a bunch of different teeth whitening products. But one of them was a, a product that had teeth whitening gel on one side and lip gloss on the other. We had done thousands of units, been really successful with it. Um, had great feedback from the, from the marketplace. We're thinking about launching it as its own separate product and, and business. But the next batch that we got manufactured, we had a, a manufacturer in Taiwan that was very high-end. They did a bunch of high-end cosmetic manufacturing. I mean, ISO 9000 certified, so on and so forth. Well, in our next batch, um, one of the suppliers changed the bioadhesive glue that held the little brush onto the stem that the teeth whitening gel piece went on. So they did that portion and they shipped it to our manufacturer in California to fill the teeth whitening gel. Well, they went to go fill this next batch where this supplier down the chain had changed this glue and it would take about 60 days, but it would start reacting and it would build up gas and they would either leak or explode. <laughs> and so uh, the next several thousand units, and because when you filled it immediately, you didn't know immediately that there was a reaction. It took a couple of months. That means we got a chance to fill it, ship it, get in our customer's hands and it started either cracking or you'd open it and literally it would shoot across the room. Um that was a pretty big mess that we had to navigate and thousands of units, tons and tons of refunds, um, just a mess. And cash got tight, got super lean. And it was, it was a place where I just was not sure how we were going to kind of get on the other side. And, and it's, that was kind of my COVID sort of situation I had to dealt with in that business a number of years ago. And I had to find a way to win. And so I would heard people talk about this whole outsourcing gig economy thing. And this is, you know, eight, 10 years ago at this point. 
And I really dug into it. I remember one night I, t- I was five hours on the computer and I learned about um, a platform called Elance. And it's no longer, it's like Elance and Odesk merged to become Upwork. Yeah, yeah, yes. Now. Yeah. But I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to save our business and solve. How, I, I, it's going to redefine how I do everything going forward. So long story short, I just dug in, learned about it, how you could tap into these gig economy resources all over the world, very low cost, very effective to do everything from websites to videos to stuff I didn't even know you could do, like data scraping or have people log into all my LinkedIn accounts and do connections. And so learning how to do that um, helped us climb out of that hole and actually save that business at that time. And then it created the foundation of my knowledge, obviously. And so I continued to use that. And I became the go-to person to learn how to do all this stuff and outsourcing and EO Atlanta, the chapter here, people would ask me to do lunch and learns. And so when I ended up exiting with that business, it was my forum that said, Brad, you're, people come to you all the time about this outsourcing gig economy stuff. Why don't you start a business around it? So for several years, I did consulting and speaking and then decided to launch our own operation. So uh, from crisis to what thought was going to be the end of our company to creating a way to find a way to win that led to subject matter and content that I had to learn that translated into probably the most aligned and excited I've ever been as an entrepreneur in this business. That's awesome. I mean, and I think, I think that's where a lot of people miss and you, you bring such a good point, the silver lining of challenge, right? The silver lining of the issues we face and and what we're going through in that. And, and there is, if we're looking for it, right. I, I like the quote, you know, and I've heard a couple of people say it on the show where, Hey, you either win or you learn. And, and, you know, when you're losing, man, I, I, I've always learned so much when I'm losing, right? when I'm winning, it's kind of like, oh, well, hey, we're winning uh, on to the next game. You know, like that, that last game was easy. But when we lose, we all break down the film. We review the tapes. Everybody, what, where were you at on this play? Where was I at? Where was I supposed to be? You know, all these things. And the silver lining is really the learning. Like you said, you, you got to go dr- deep in to figuring out how you're going to win. And when you find something like the Elance Odesk, right, you realize, well, I've got a bunch of assets here that are that are very affordable to me that know a bunch of stuff that I don't know right now. And we could really use without going broke on this thing. So what a what a huge deal. Um, so let's let's yeah. talk a little bit as you talk about that and you kind of find your sweet spot. Right. What do you think like your superpower is, Brad? Like what what, what really jumps in? I mean, it's nothing specially unique. I mean, I think uh, I actually just had our a big uh, leadership meeting with all of our our senior leaders in our company, and and one of them asked me. I had kind of a roundtable to let them do a Q and A with the CEO and just let them kind of ask me questions. And one of them asked me that as well. And and I, I think self discipline. I mean, I know is not super elaborate or magical, but um, that's a you know that's a big thing that Jim Collins talks about. In all of his books, and if anybody gets a chance, you go to jimcollins.com and you go to the, to the thing called the map. He's taken all the key principles from all of his five or six books and reduced it down into what he calls the map. And he kind of categorized it. And it's three buckets, disciplined people, performing disciplined thought, and executing disciplined action. And it's all rooted in discipline. And the upbringing I had with being in kind of an entrepreneurial type environment, I worked in our family business and worked in the warehouse and swept floors and so forth. And just discipline to, I mean, I get up at five o'clock every morning and I think I, I would attest that to probably a big part of what drives our success. What I get done in those first two hours before most people get up, that I get in 10 additional hours per week when most people get up at seven or eight, um, makes all the difference in the world. So mm. self-discipline and, and drive and commitment to, you know, finish and find a way to win. I mean, when the setbacks come, but it comes all comes back to, to discipline. Um, you know, when, Great by choice is another one of Collins's books, and he looks at all the characteristics of some of the top leaders. And it's not just discipline; it is fanatical discipline. Is mm. what they talk about, and not everybody has it. Um, but I've I've was brought up with it, and and I still still have my weak moments from time to time. But I think that's that's been a key element to me being able to kind of get on the other side. Wow, yeah, I think it's one of the absolute my number one go to. Right. If I said, and and we do this, I have a training today about this. And one of the the key elements on that training is that self-discipline separates great leaders from good leaders. And that doesn't mean you cannot be a good leader if 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 you're a little bit lax on your self-discipline. I've seen a lot of good leaders and but great leaders, they never lack that quality <laughs> ever. Yeah. It's it's incredible. Um, the separator and um it's, I, I think Collins has got it dead on. I, I think that's a great tool right there. That's a nice little nugget right there. Just that max. What a, to it's called the map. bring yeah, all the his works into a, into a tighter framework. 
man, that, that right there is worth gold right there. If everybody on this would go to, and, and, and I would just highly encourage you to do, if you go to, I think it's just jimcollins.com or whatever, and you go on and you click on, I think, um, concepts is the tab you click on. And, and basically he got asked after he did all these bodies of work, they're like, Jim, can you tie it all together? Can you put a bow on it for us? And that's what caused him to create this thing called the map. And there's a short little five minute video right above it. And then you'll see, so disciplined people. And so he pulls from each of the books, what are disciplined people concepts, right? Right people, right seats and level five leadership, then disciplined thought, right? And then disciplined action and like, you know, bullets before cannonballs is one of his frameworks, um, mm -hmm. the hedgehog concept. So he places each of these kind of key nuggets of, of, of timeless principles, but he buckets them in one of those three categories. Is it the people? Is it the thought? Or is it the action? And then the fourth one is built to last. Uh, to your point, that kind of speaks to his, you know, his book on, on that piece. But it just does an amazing job of tying it all together into one piece, a little video that kind of explains it. Um, but as he said, it's all rooted in discipline to start with. Mm, that's so good. Well, I, I think it's a huge superpower. I mean, I think it is a, se a a great separator for sure. Knowing what you know now, you know, the toothpaste challenge as you go through that, do, do you sit there and go, I would do things differently now. I would do something in a different way. Like, would there be something that you would choose another way? You know, it's funny. This is another question I got asked by my leadership team today. And, um, you know, turn on me. I guess I've I've had enough negative experiences that because I was committed to learning from them and finding a way to translate into a positive aspect of my life, um, that I really wouldn't at all. Um, I think we all arrive who we are as as individuals. I'm 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 pleased to kind of the status of of kind of where things are in, in my in my life. I definitely have a lot of challenges and, and issues that kind of occurred and had to navigate. Some I was a part of. Some I wasn't. They kind of happened. Um, but they all translate, um, into who I am, you know, today. I mean, I, in my early twenties, you know, we had a family business disaster that happened with that, with that entrepreneurial environment I grew up in, things blew up in an industry that was changing dramatically and caused the business to kind of you know go under our family went under, I had to take a you know, semester off school, come home, be a parent to my, you know, to my sisters and wow. kind of help and participate, not parent, but just kind of help support with my parents kind of navigating. They kind of, you know, had some challenges they navigated kind of during that time frame. Um, you know, I would never change any of it. I mean, it accelerated my emotional maturity at a young mm. age and did for my, both of my little sisters as well. Um, that just adversity. And, and as you know, as an entrepreneur, I mean, I, I could wake up tomorrow and like the house is on fire and it's like, okay, all right, this is, well, let's, we need to do this, do that. Let's move it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like That's just, a challenge of the day, right? Like, yeah. like it's just, you've, it creates a level of muscle and strength to deal with adversity that, you know, you just know, hey, this is a challenge, but I know there's going to be a positive thing on the other side. And, and I'm going to commit to finding, you know, what that what that is. So everything I've looked back to, everything from teeth whitening pins blowing up to translating to me launching a business I never would have, you know, done to, you know, some things that have happened in my personal life or otherwise have all translated into, you know, positive kind of opportunities. But it does take a mentality of like, how am I going to find the win and the mess? And yeah. if you don't have that and it's just like, oh, I'm what was me and I'm going to wallow in this and I'm going to drink a, you know, a fifth of bur bourbon a day and deal with drugs, deal with my issue. Like you're not finding the win in the mess. But yeah. if you are willing to find the wins in the mess, um, you know, most people probably wouldn't change some things that have happened. Yes. Yeah. You got to keep pushing to find that way. Right. That's what winners do. Winners find a way. So yeah. let's I mean, and I, and I think what you're talking about there, I think about Gladwell and his 10,000 hours. Right. When you talk about um, handling adversity, you got a lot of reps handling challenges when you're a CEO for a long time, when you're an entrepreneur, when you're a founder, like every day. And, and, I, and I really push this hard on companies I work with. Like I don't, I don't like problems. I don't like that language. I think the, ver I think the verbiage is negative. Um, I, think it, I think it has a negative connotation. Uh, I, I don't want your problems, Brad, and I don't think you want mine. But man, the moment you tell me You've got a challenge. I'm like, oh, how can I help you with the challenge? Like, you got a challenge because I'm always up for a challenge, Brad. You know that, and and you're the same guy because I've asked you, right? I'm right. literally like, hey, Brad, I got a challenge. What do you think? And you're like, oh, I got some ideas, right? Let's get together on finding a way together, and you jump in, and and I don't know if you're so excited about that. If I call you and I go, man, I got a major problem, Brad. This really sucks. Right. <laughs> like, you're like. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I got my own, man. I don't know. Right. So, so talk to me about, is there, is there a value? Is there something like, 
you could what, what would you tell someone uh, a behavior or a value right now if they are if they're down right now and they're facing one of those big challenges of life you know similar to your family right where where things are changing like where you're like you may have to change your address <laughs> like you may not make payroll you know these are big challenges that you're looking at an account that does not have enough money in it for whatever mortgage, whatever it is. Thank you for joining us for another Winners Find A Way show. I am your host, Trent Clark. If you love this episode, share this episode with your friends and follow us on whatever podcasting medium you're listening to. If you want more content from us, join us at leadershipity.com or the Leadershipity YouTube channel. You can find us on all the social media networks at either Trent M. Clark or Leadershipity for our award-winning workshop win with great teams you can find that page on linkedin as well as our corporate page leadershipity if you want to win more it starts with you today say it with me now i have what it takes